ability. I'm just going to want to go over to Joy and request um, to wave and request to join in. Why good you got Kalsa? Why good you got How are you, Benji? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. You good? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So I was just saying to our viewers that today we're going to be talking about children, uh, how COVID 19's affected them, and social and mental well being. Um, because obviously, even with adults, we've been affected by it, and I don't think we've covered as much as how it's affecting our children. Yeah. Um, so I just thought it'd be a good topic as we're going to come into schools as well to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. So Benji, but, yeah. yeah, I know I returned to school. So Benji, I think first of all, can you just tell us a bit about yourself and how Seek Colouring came about as well? Um, so if you don't mind giving a bit of a background. Yeah, sure. No problem. Um, thank you for having me on your show today. Oh, thank Thanks you. For... Um, so Seek Colouring has been around for about four years now. Um, it's as old as my youngest daughter, four. And I've always had a passion for colouring. Um, it started when I was living abroad and in an Indian family mm. where one of their children were, um, his homework was, was set to have colouring, a lot of colouring. So he'd make me join in as well with yeah. his colouring. And I enjoyed it. I didn't know it was for his anger issues or mm. that's why it was set. But I join in with him because that's what he would, um, would like me to do. Yeah. And so that's where the passion of colouring has been major for me. Mm. And then when my third child was born, um, at nursery, with my other two children, they were just about to celebrate Easter. And my youngest by then was six weeks. So while they were in a study, uh, while they were going to do Easter and all this celebration with Topia and Ande and Kukra, I just thought, wow we do so much for easter and it was a punjabi nursery as yeah. well oh really so yeah so and so what happened was i just thought i asked them are you doing anything for Vasaki? Mm. and they had said um that they're not doing anything because i wasn't aware of how to do anything oh, okay so that's where i thought okay so what is it that children like doing because at that mm. time i had a um, two and a half year old and uh, 18 month old so that's where I decided, okay, why don't we just give the kids some sort of gift? Yeah. And it was a three-page colouring sheet, and it was all printed at home. It was really fantastic. One was a um, a rocket. One was a, uh, a tractor and a car. And they had, like, little singing pictures on there or little singing picture so that it could feel a bit related to the Sikhi aspect. Mm. Um, and a, and a uh, card for Happy Vasaki and some crayons. And we gave to about 60 kids because that nursery was quite big. Yeah. And the feedback that we got from that nursery was absolutely amazing. It was oh, wow. really positive. And the parents were like, why don't you do a book for the children? Mm. And I said, my, my background is IT. I don't know how to design a book. I don't even know where to start. Oh. <laughs> so um, me and my husband did some research and thought, let's look into this. Yeah. So that's where we um, found how to do publishing, how many pages, where to trial a printout. And it started like that. And we had no support. So um, we just kind of did it on our own. And that's where Seek Colouring had started with that one book of a trial and period, just to yeah. see what it was like. And then I went to Gany Sukhasing and asked, you know, what would you like for your camps? Mm. And then he gave me a specific type of, you know, the Gurmukh colouring book. So mm. within, he wanted, gave me a week to design that. And and with time, at the beginning, it was with word processing that I just did it. It was really simple, yeah. Microsoft Word. And then I went on to Illustrator. So I had to self teach myself, like, mm. you know, how to use Illustrator, get the package. Mm. And then Gurnanit Devji's um, teachings came. So the books just came with demand with either what Sangat wanted or yeah. with what I want to teach my children. And we published so many in a year because it was a niche market. Mm. It was, the demand was crazy. Yeah. And that's where it's always, that's where it's been carried on. So whilst I'm a mum at home with these three young children, mm. it made sense that I should, I should be yeah. um, working from home, but also doing, looking after the children. Yeah. 
I remember mm. when those books came out because we were at Aransoi in Coventry and yeah. they had your store there. Yeah. And my kids loved them, Benji, and it was just something really good for them to have. Yeah. Um, but Benji, what was the inspiration behind the pictures? Was it, first of all, just how did you just think, of, okay, we're going to keep it kind of basic? Because I remember the car that you had and the tractor. So was it just kept because simple for the children or did you have a concept behind that? No, it was what, like, so my daughter would like a billy. Yeah. So I would put, you know, like a little a little guti ali because she yeah. used to wear a guti at that time and with a bat so it would be her and a billy so it'd be basically looking at what they like what the children put, liked yeah, yeah what they liked and then putting that alongside with it yeah and that just made it easier because then i didn't need to and it was very the first book is more of a like a cultural book mm. so if my gore friends came over and we had a like a craft session for the children yeah. they would use our books and they would feel like that's normal yeah because it, it wasn't too much. It was yeah, yeah. it was good for them to see that, oh, mm. here's a child, a seat child, and yeah. with a cat, that's normal. So yeah, so it, it wasn't it was, too much. No, it was, yeah. it was really good for a starting point. Mm. And so that's where that one started. And then it went on to the Gurumat colouring book. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. How have you found it working with Baji? Because I know Baji does a lot with you as well, Hannah. He does. It, it's really good. We work really well together. Yeah. Um. He he does all the all the websites. He replies to a lot of my messages. Um. I do most of the design of yeah. the actual products, and he does the back end stuff. So, I don't think I would have done it without him. Yeah. Or so you need I think that more support. Than, yeah. More than anything, you need the support. Everything yeah. else can get done, even mm. if you have to get someone else to help you. But yeah, the support is so important. And as well as being a mum of three kids, you need somebody with you to keep that going as well. It's difficult well, otherwise. Yeah all the time and yeah. not only that I have my mum with me as well yeah. so that really helps because you know like yeah, yeah. <laughs> so much to do and then on top of that when the kids are gone to sleep that's when I get the work done yeah. after that not before because no. it's impossible no and you've got to give the kids their time as well as you know Definitely. balance everything out so Benji, how, have your, yeah, how have yeah. your kids managed with the COVID-19 obviously at first when it happened in March um, we're now in August. Um, how have they coped throughout the past few months? I think um, with children, it's been the most impact for them uh, throughout this pandemic. And uh, as adults, we can we have the ability to um, <clears throat> we have the ability to understand and reason. Mm. Whereas with younger children, their world has been um, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, their world has been turned upside down. Yeah. So. They've gone from going to school with activities, um, extracurricular activities, and now being stuck at home yeah. um, with no other siblings apart from, if they've got siblings, it's great, but mm. otherwise, if they've got cousins or anyone yeah. else, they don't have that now. It's got to be all virtual. Mm. So I think from, a, like, from their point of view, it's been a massive turnaround um I'm not sure for the good or for the bad at that time when it first started I yeah. think it was just new to everyone I mean I've got three kids as well Benji so I know what it's like and, and mm -hmm. I mean my kids were like yeah, yeah we've got time off school but then mm -hmm. actually it dawned on them um and then they realized what was going on around the world and the pandemic and how it was affecting everybody um and you know my daughter would be like you know what mum I just wish Maharaj would just take everything away now because it's too much as well at mm -hmm. some point so I think at one point it did actually affect, affect them. You know, they were missing going out just generally, you know, being free to just go to, the, uh, to Tesco's or just being free to go, you know, out to the park, um, and which we started to do slowly. Um, but I think at first they were just quite afraid as well. So they were quite scared to go out, you know. Yeah. And because they were hearing about it first at school and then it was news, so I think it did affect them. Um, and now it's been obviously coming on to five months where they've been at home. Um, and it has been quite hard and it's just trying to manage it as well and trying to find things to keep them busy. I think that's been a difficult one. I don't know yourself, Benji, how you've kept the kids busy. <laughs> I think I, at the beginning I would have thought five months to be at home, like that would never have crossed my mind yeah. or even another, a further so many months because you actually, we don't actually know what's going to no, happen in yeah. September yet. Um, but like we've, we've managed because we've kept a routine and the children as young as ours, mm. 
um, it wouldn't have worked, worked otherwise. Yeah. I don't think with I've tried a day or two without a routine. It's it's crazy. Yeah. But with a routine, they you know we follow a routine during the week, mm-hmm. and they're kind of like free reign on the weekends. Yeah. So they can do um, whatever they like. Yeah. But with the weekdays, we've got definitely a set routine, and that maintains a balance. Mm-hmm. So that helps us, and it helps them as well. So no, don't too. Yeah, yeah, feel too I was going to say definitely. I think routine helps the children, yeah. um, even just sleeping on time and waking up on time as well. Oh yeah. Um, and I've been like that with mine. And I was saying to a couple of friends, I might sound like a harsh mum, but I have been keeping them going to bed on time. They've been waking mm. up, you know, because I feel that helps them. And mm. I think we know what it's. I mean, in schools, for example, when children have non-uniform, just that one day, Benji, and you know, it just goes out the window and everything goes crazy at school. So imagine at home, being at home for the past five months without a routine. Mm-hmm. So I definitely found having a routine with mine helped that. Um, in terms of things like mental well-being, because I think that's what I, I really want to focus on in terms of children's mental well-being um, and their social well-being. So social well-being in terms of obviously they've not had contact with cousins and siblings for a while, um, for the first few months especially. And now obviously we are allowed to, you know, mix with certain bubbles bubbles but how were yours coping socially without having that interaction so due to their ages because they're quite young mine are they haven't really um missed their friends enough to want to call them all the time Mm. um i think if they were like nine or ten it'd be a completely different ball game but um but like like mine have their cousins that they would call and that was actually a positive for them because before it was it'd only be on the weekends Mm. Whereas with the pandemic, they started calling them at least for a month. Yeah. Um, it was every day. And so it's they good, it's back, building that relationship. relationship yeah. yeah, and it was and it was just building the relationship between them and themselves as well. Because obviously, uh, with my children, they weren't always together mm. because they would be at school. Yeah. So when they come back, it's only that small period of time. And then it would be evenings. But now it was all the time. Mm. So they had to get used to this and had to adjust with each yeah. other. And so, but if my like my daughter, who's youngest four, if she wanted to um, Skype or call one of her uh, one particular friend, it'd be fine. I would yeah. do that with the parents. We'd make a day, and they'd have like a good hour. And all they do is giggle, yeah, because that's all they would do at school. <laughs> so, but I think just, they need that as well. They don't need they? that. They needed that. Um, I think my children are slightly older. So my daughter's eleven. I've got a te- eleven, nine, and a seven-year-old. Yeah. Um, and they're the same. I think at first they didn't realise, like, they didn't miss their friends as such. I think my 11-year-old did more because she's at that age where she wanted to interact with her friends. But I think, like you said, they were phoning siblings, FaceTiming, mm-hmm. and that really helped them. Yeah. And phoning friends, I mean, you know, she'd call her friends, but like you said, they would just giggle and, you know, just say a couple of words. My 7-year-old was the funniest to, like, take the phone, FaceTime his friend and go hide in his room and they'll just laugh. Um, and talk about Ninjago's and for them it was it was good because they just needed that time as well with their friends um, but Ben how do you think they will cope going back to school um, especially for example they're saying we've got to stay within bubbles and you know they've got to can't mix with other children it's going to be quite different to what school is now the norm I'd say yeah norm um, yeah. <laughs> whatever that means now um, so I think at the end of the day we've got to see the bigger picture um, these are like extraordinary times. So we, you know, and children are expected that their education may be affected. Mm. And we've tried to minimize the impact by getting them to have virtual lessons. So they did have math and English yeah. virtual lessons most days. Mm. And it was only a half an hour, one to one to one, but that an hour, one to one, they got so much done. Yeah. And we would just get those Amazon books and then provide to the teachers. And it was great seva for these teachers to do that for my children because it meant I don't have to teach or learn how to start teaching. So I think when they get back on, into school, mm-hmm. I think that even though they might be in bubbles there, they're going to have, they should have structure in place yeah. at schools. And I believe they, they will, yeah. you know, with the temperature checks and if mm-hmm. anyone's got any signs and what to do with them. Yeah. So I think peace of mind will be that they will be fine when they go back in. Um, they know the distancing, they know how it works when, you know, one to two metres, um, not coughing, washing hands, covering mouth. Yeah. So the basics are there. And I think it all depends on how much you actually talk to your children about this. Yeah. So, you know, if you, I think you should talk to your children quite often. 
mm, and definitely. prepare them. So we, I've brought them um, backpacks, the book bags, yeah. um, water bottles. And I we also walk to past the school to go to see the horses or whatnot. Yeah. But we go past so they can get used to that. This is going to be the walk. Um, we brought a bit of the uniform as well. And the reason why I brought a bit of the uniform is so that they can mentally be prepared. Yeah. So that, you know, if we go back in September or January or whenever the corona has gone away, yeah. um, that's when you're going to go back in. Yeah, definitely. So it's little I, snippets of trying yeah. to um, engage that, but having that talk. And if you don't have that talk, definitely, it's going to, it's going to be much for them to grasp at that time. Yeah. And that brings me on to, for example, we've got some parents that are feeling anxious and are quite scared to send their children back. Um, and I think the tips that you've just given will be really helpful as parents. So basically just making sure that they are preparing their children, talking to their children about this as well. Um, so with my children, I've been going through, so we've had risk assessments come from the school. So I've just gone through that with them to say, you know, you'll be going through this corridor and you'll be going through that gate. So it's just mentally preparing them. Um, and I think that's what, if there are parents that are feeling anxious and worried, um, definitely they should either call the school as well and speak to the school as well so they can get some guidance. Um, but yeah, I think it's preparing those children. And like you said, just doing little bits. So we've been doing the same. We've brought some uniform. We've done the backpack. We've got the pack lunches already. So I think mentally they are getting ready that they will be going to school. But again, Benj, we don't really know what's going to happen, do we, in the next few weeks? No, it could um, change week by exactly, week. Yeah. And that's what also I prepare them for, like, you yeah. know, talking about um, not, not being aware um, of what's going to happen. So it yeah. may change. Um, but right now, all we do know is that, yeah. um, sorry, mum came in. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I locked the door, but obviously not. <laughs> yeah, I kept it all back in my room. Oh, which is um, fine. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think, um, and you will find like with advice out there, like a lot of parents claim to be experts um, in parenting. And I don't claim to be an expert mm-hmm. at all, but we all have our different upbringing and life experiences. So I think that's how we shape our children. But even with our different beliefs and values Mm -hmm. and how it impacts our parenting style, I still think that the the basics should be right. And that is by sitting the children down on one-to-one. I also think that the one-to-one thing Mm -hmm. is important. So if you have it with with each child, have that time and explain it. Because my seven-year-old would be different to my four-year-old. With my four-year-old, I have to explain to her, like, you know, we don't hug somebody and we don't give jeffries now. And this is what what I mean by that. So I give her examples and you can do it to me. But outside of home, you know, we we try not to. Because that age they do. But the seven-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. But I was going to say, she'll be going into reception. She, yeah. So she's. Even in the Gurdwara, when we go on a Sunday, um, I have, I've tried to yeah. test her as well. She's got like a little camera. <laughs> and I've said to her, why don't you go take some pictures of your little friends over there? And she said, I can't because of the corona. <laughs> <laughs> like, Which is okay. good. So she's aware. She's, she's aware. She knows. Yeah. yeah. And it's good. And I think, eldest, like you said, yeah. yeah. My, my eldest has written a newsletter about the corona when it first started. And yeah. I think that was because at school before they left in that two weeks mm-hmm. they find it in them of what what the corona is all about yeah. and how how bad it can be and how serious it can be yeah. and so that's why um they were their understanding was much better than seven and six year old whereas yeah. the four-year-old was very yeah. well, when's this going away when yeah. can we go swimming when can we go get back to normal back to normal isn't it yeah, yeah. So, Definitely. I mean, I was going to say that with the older children, you can sit and explain to them as well and go yeah. through some detail. And it's going to be harder for children that are age four and five because they go into reception and reception is all about integrated play and they're used to that as well. Yeah. Um, so for that, I have to step back and not being able to hug their teacher or go to their teacher is going to be quite hard as well. Um, so they, yeah. did, um, they did before they left I think within that last two weeks was quite important because we were like do we take them out of school now or shouldn't this be the time yeah. where school shut down like I remember having that conversation with a lot of parents mm-hmm. but um, at the last um, at the, at the, um, what they do is have a sheet and they say to the child do you want to give a high five or do you want to give a hug or do you want to give that type of options but within that last few weeks mm-hmm. they stopped those contact and it was very um, like a 
like an invisible high five yeah that type of thing so yeah. <laughs> I used to do that and that I yeah. think that prepared them as well that when you go out you yeah. you are not to touch people and mm. And this is why. So and I think, yeah, it certainly has helped as well. Like, for example, we've been going to Tesla, so my children know still to keep the two metre distance. You know, if somebody's coming on one side of the aisle, we've got to go to the other side. And I think that will help them when they go to school as well. Um, I do think they'll forget, though. I think my, you know, middle one, he is such a cheeky chappy that he'll just go straight into it and want to play with his friends and just get back to normal. So mm. I think, you know, there are, and like you said, sitting with each child is different because each child is different and they'll understand things differently as well. Um, so even though like with the other one, talk to her and she'll understand everything with the middle one he'll be yes 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 mummy hanji hanji but then he'll just go back and be like I want to play with my friends though I want to give them a high five and hug them um, but mm. it is just reinforcing that with them to say actually you've got to keep the distance and it's for your own safety as well that we're saying this um, one thing um, I have a difficulty with with maybe you can help me um, <laughs> is my youngest keeps putting everything in her mouth her fingers yeah. And I, I'm like saying to her, you can't do this when you get to school. You're going to touch everything and then that's it, corona. Yeah. And um, she just looks at me and nods her head. But I've even tried that, the nail polish. I've oh. tried, and she's like, still carries on. And just like, does it, yeah. Benji, my middle one, seven, he but... still does it, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> where, do you know, have you seen where, you know, um, if you put glitter on your hands, and I did this whole thing at home where I sneezed and I said, oh, look, look at my hands. And I did this whole thing, look at the germs. This is what germs are like. And I used glitter to say, look, you can't actually see the germs, but imagine the glitter is the germs. And then I went around touching all my kids and saying, look, I said, mummy's touched you on the shoulder. Look where the germs have gone now. Mummy's touched you on the hands. And from that, the youngest one really understood it, homed in on him that actually, when you are even just sneezing or coughing, this is what is happening. Um, that's so we did a really that. good idea. I'm yeah, and I, that. yeah, because you know what, for that age, and I, when I taught reception as well, and that really worked, they understood that, oh my gosh, this is what germs are like. And even mm. though we can't see them, mm. um, and I said, look, the glitter is germs. And I said, look, if I'm touching the door, the germs are going on the door if I'm touching mm. this. So I kept reinforcing that if you sneeze, quickly go wash your hands, you know, do all of that with them. And that really helped, I think, with the little one, just so that he could physically see that this is what germs are like. Um, even though we can't see them. So the glitter kind of had that effect, as in this is the germs going around everywhere. Um, yeah. So maybe try something like that, Ben. But I think, like you said as well, I'm, I'm not a professional in parenting. I'm learning every single day. So, all the time, um, all the time. Yeah, yeah, definitely, all the time. And it's just learning off each other as well. So little tips that you have, I can then share with my children. Um, you but can imagine how do... it's um, difficult yeah. for the, the parents who have children with extra needs Yes. or the children that have disability and that yeah. need that extra help and and that would be so hard for that child and yeah. the parent so I, I really feel for those out and there. I was going to come on to that saying how do you oh. think children that have the additional needs um how yeah. do you think they will feel kind of going back to school and after being at home for about five months um right. you know parents have how do you think they should prepare them for that? Because it is difficult, obviously, with children that have additional needs, and it's very different for them as well. Um, so yeah, what kind I of can, give, uh, tips or advice? I can only speculate with, with those type of parents because yeah. um, it must be really difficult for them in the first place because it's, um, an, a, you know, it's, it's more work, I think, yeah. maybe. Um, and it's, it's hard you know, because with our children, we can sit down and talk to them. But if you have a child that you can't sit down and talk to, it must be frustrating. Mm -hmm. So I think if they had extra help at the beginning of how to deal with that frustration or how to deal with children, then that would be great. And then I think when the pandemic started easing, I have seen um, one of my friends who's got a son who's got Down syndrome. The help came to their house. Oh, that's really and good. So they had that extra help in the garden. Yeah with all the sensory and yeah. all the help that they needed because they want, and that child needed it because yeah. the child wanted some outside contact as well. Yeah. So, and I think we should encourage our parents that they shouldn't be afraid to ask for help as well. So if they do need some guidance or some help, they should, you know, go to the school and say, look, my child will be coming, you know, we don't know when, but could you start preparing them? And either they, you know, do Zoom calls or they could pop by or do something, I think, to help mm. those parents. But definitely, I think those parents should contact the school if they do feel that the child that has additional, additional needs needs that support. Um, and we shouldn't shy away from that as well. 
No, definitely. Even schools now ask if you've got any issues, um, give us a call. So I have taken all of mine into the school because it's a new one. Um, so they get a feel of the whole mm-hmm. thing. And that was um, a month ago. Yeah. So it was just so that they could understand that this is yeah. where you're going to be coming. This is the distance of walking. And this is the school uniform. Look at the yeah. kids outside because they were having distancing with a lot more teachers there. Mm-hmm. So they could see that maybe this would be how it is. But obviously it'd be Gail because yeah. in September it'd be more than like 10 people in mm-hmm. a class. So yeah. they, they could have that feel. But I think more than anything, sitting down with that child is the most important thing and trying your best. Definitely. So if yeah. you need to reach out for help, you should definitely reach out. Yeah. And definitely. I think that's key as well. Parents should reach out and we shouldn't be afraid to actually admit if we need any help. Yeah. Um, and, you know, call a friend, call the schools, just contact somebody to get that help. Somebody. Um, yeah. You know, within a social network, because I think it's really important we have that for each other. Um, Benj, how do you think children, for, so for example, if there's a child ch- who you, who's gone into slight depression and feeling really down, um, and because the child's been at home for about four or five months and they've kind of gone a bit sullen and gone into like a bit of a shell. Um, are there any tips you could possibly share with parents on how to encourage that child to come back out or anything you'd give them guidance on and what to do? Yeah, so I, I knew um, a friend whose workload got actually more whilst the pandemic started. And so their child, that means having time spent with that child has gone less. So um, what they had to do was reduce hours at work so they could spend more time with that child because you don't want them to go into a, a deep hot at a young age because it's very difficult to come out of that pattern. So uh, again, I'm no expert, but from my experience, all I had said to her was maybe reduce a little bit of time and spend that time, quality time with that child. So whether that meant doing some, like, you know, in your daily time, rather than just saying, manga, study, 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 yeah. study, do some cooking with them, gardening with them, um, washing the car, you know, like the things that you would do otherwise, get them involved with the skills that you wouldn't learn at school. Definitely. And I found that would help because it's more of a one-to-one. So even though I get my children to do like six minutes, similar, similar about how you feel, yeah. it's the writing down how you feel is, a, is the, for me the main thing as well yeah. so that they can express how they feel. Otherwise, how do children express how they feel if you don't teach them from a younger age? Definitely, yeah. So, and I think it comes back to that talking to your child as well. Yeah. So I know uh, my middle one, her dad, he loves it at night time where I'll sit with him and he just wants to chat, you know, a good five, ten minute chat. And, you know, he'll tell me his day and how he's been feeling. And I think it's really important to do that with the children because yeah. they need to be able to express, oh, well, mummy, I've had a really good day or I wasn't happy about this and this is what made me feel sad. And I think it does come back down to you know, talking to your child and give her that five, ten minutes. Because even Benji, two minutes makes such a difference. Um, it makes a difference. Your, five minutes. Your child is two minutes quality time. Isn't much. Time. Yeah. Five minutes it really isn't much. And no. as they get older, they get more um, clued on. So, for example, yeah. if they're read, reading and they're out to you because it's story time, yeah. um, they don't want you on your phone, on your laptop, on your iPad, anything else. They want yeah. that full attention and it's not because they're seeking for attention it's because they know they deserve that time with you so um actually if you think about it five minutes even if you've got three kids that's 15 minutes it's like it hurt you to spend that exact five minutes listening to their story and then moving on to the next child so i think it's really important yeah and if you think you know 15 minutes throughout a whole day that's not a lot at all that you're giving your children uh, no. We did this thing at home where we had our phones on the side and we were like, we're not going to go to our phones. Um, you know, we tried to put them to a side and say, we're not going to do anything on our phones. We're going to give yeah. the children that quality time that they deserve. Yeah. Um, because we are, and it, we're all guilty of it, where we're on our phones, you know, checking our messages on social media, doing all of this. Yeah. Um, and we don't realise actually children are picking up on it as well. Yeah. And they see mummy on the phone, they see daddy on the phone. Um, so, so yeah, we did a thing at home where we had to put our phones to the side and just spend that time. Uh, with the kids as well um so think, benji do you yeah go on, sorry. sorry especially in meal time yeah that's the best time to put your phone to one yeah. side <laughs> and actually um even if the phone's ringing i will say to my mom as well like then yeah. they're they like you know the time to eat and that was one of yeah. her rules to me yeah <laughs> so i think that was a thing that i've learned from her that yeah um dinner time is an important time that you reflect and ask each other 
you know, how's your day? How's it going? What should we do yeah. tomorrow? Make plans. Yeah, definitely. So, and Bridget, if you think back to how we were growing up, you know, there wasn't phones then. You know, we no. used to sit with our family and yeah. we used to sit at the dinner table or we'd sit on the floor together and we'd have a roti and we'd sit. And it wasn't yeah. that you used to have your phone or somebody, used to, you know, you'd have that dialogue with each other. Yeah. Um, and that social interaction is missing, I think, today, you yeah. know, with parents and their children. Um, we There was a really sad incident that we had with a friend of ours and their child um left home and he was about 15 years old mm. and Benji it all came down to and he came back after two days but Benji came down to the fact that his parents weren't speaking to the child as much as in they weren't having that dialogue just yeah. general chit chat to say how are you how was your day friend mm. um and you know we realized that actually we're not spending that time with our children and mm. from that you know my friend learned that actually I'm not giving my children that quality time that I need to and even though he's 15 you know I still needed to give that time so I think no matter what age your children are, just need, spending five, ten minutes with them, you need that, need that time. Um, I know with my daughter now, she's going to secondary and she wants more quality time. So it's more, mummy, me and you, you go out and do something. Let's leave the boys at home. So, you know, they want that quality with you. Um, and I think it's really important that we give that to them. You can imagine if, like, I'm, I like that with my mum now yeah. <laughs> as well so I'm like mum come on let's sit down and have something to eat or let's have a drink or ice cream or something yeah. and it's more let's do let's talk and let's talk mm. about nanny or let's talk about what's going on yeah. and so we have that as a norm yeah. so you can imagine it's only going to be definitely normal for mm. my children and it's things that my grandma used to inst like instill in me she's like okay sit down and I had to massage her arms and legs and we had to do that as kids and it I understand now why it was more about sitting down and having that quality time with that mm. person without TV on because back then it wasn't laptops or iPhones it was TV it was the TV yeah yeah so it was TV off and we had to talk about and it was just about general life mm -hmm. and now I, I do that with my children I make them do massages and yeah. um and and it's great because it's that connection yeah. and that's without again no technology it's just um, our time together, and it's it's so much fun. They do enjoy from... it. They do. Yeah. Well, they do. My it. children <laughs> love the face massage, so they'll sit there. They'll be ready in bed. They'll be like, "Come on, mummy, now give my face massage." And so to each child, I'll go in their rooms and I'll do this to their face, and they love it. They just yeah. love that. And children want that sensory touch, no matter what age they are. They Have still you got them that. to do it to you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the important part, Ben. It it's is all about us. <laughs> and you know what? The little one's funny, Brabby. He'll tickle me around mm. and I'm like, massage mummy, and he'll do it, and it's really sweet. And they'll do it to yeah. daddy. So the other day, we went for a little walk, and we came back, and they were massaging daddy's legs, and it was really sweet as well. And you know, we were doing it to them, and they were doing it to us. But it is having that interaction with the children, yeah. um, and just making it, you know, turn phones off, turn TV off, and just integrating with your children. Yeah. Um, and especially I think the positive I found with this pandemic is getting that time with our children and being able to spend as much time, um, you know, with them. Because I'm a full time working mum and it was difficult. It got to a point where you're like, you know, your life was rush, rush, rush. You know, you wake up, get ready, you go to work and you didn't actually get that time with the children. No. Um, and I think it comes back to that point you were saying the children needed to learn to get on with each other as well, because they ended up spending so much time together at home, which they weren't actually used to because they'd go to school. Um, so I think they found actually how to get on with each other better as well, which is really good. Um, uh, I but... think um, I've learned that there's a new word to use for being at home. It used to be where it was, yeah, this is difficult. Yeah, this is hard. Um, but it, it's no one to blame. There's no one to blame for this. It's just it is what it is. And let's just yeah. kind of get on with it. But now I've, I've learned a new word. It, it's challenging. Yeah. You know, it's like a more of a positive <laughs> spin to it. <laughs> Because now over time, it, you kind of got used to it. Yeah. So I think for some parents, either you've gotten used to it or you've mm. really struggled. And those parents who have struggled, which I, I also know, I, I really feel for them. So when that mm. opportunity came where kids could go back to school, they sent them back to school. Mm. And I, I would never judge them yeah. because I'm not in their shoes to know what they're actually going through, Definitely. which is log into work all day long and then you've yeah. got to, then you've got to feed the baby and you've got these other two children as well and and you've got you know family members to look after or extended family living with 
there's so oh, much it, no. going on there's more work now there's more yeah. food to and, the, and I think now it kind of got used to it but those parents now there's six weeks yeah. holidays for them it's it's gone hard again it has and become I, hard for some parents yeah and I just feel like I have to just keep checking up on them just saying you know, how yeah. are you how's it going do you want Definitely. to talk about anything and I think that that's all you can do be there yeah. for them and, and a Definitely. message is all they need a text message but at the beginning I remember going back to the beginning of the pandemic I didn't really realize how hard it was going to be mm. with um like even my nanny was really good at the yeah. distancing and shopping for her and then shopping for ourselves and I couldn't normally I'd take the kids with me to shopping mm. but then that stopped yeah because they get well, like touching things. Mm. Even when I said na shiro na karo, yeah. they would have it like you don't understand you. You're not actually supposed no. to start touching things now. It's got to a point where we got to keep our distance. And yeah. you know when it was like really serious. Mm. And I said to so I had to keep them back at home. So I think for them they knew then as well the yeah. severity of it because mummy's gone alone, alone mm. out to do what she needs to do and for yeah. big nanny and there was no contact there as well. Mm. So. And now yeah. it's kind of become a norm for them. It has. And I think even with the face masks and everything, it's starting to become normal now for them. Yeah. So, you know, if we go out, they know mummy's got to put a mask on when she goes into yeah. the shop, and so has daddy. And it has become the new norm, we should say. Um, yeah. But I think, the, I think the key things for parents now to just take back is that talk to your children, you know, try to prepare them uh, for what is to come if schools open now in September, in December, whenever they decide to open, mm. um, whether it's a phased opening or when everyone goes in together. Um, I mean, we're Benji, I'm a teacher and we've been planning for this to open and we are going in in September, but we don't know if the children will come in. So mm. it all depends on what the government decide in the next few weeks. So even for us, you know, trying to plan things, it's still in yeah. the air. Yeah. So we're not sure as well what's coming. Um, but we're just putting things in place just in case we do decide to open in September. See, but if, it's, if it's compulsory, mm. then people would have to send their kids in. Yeah. But you, you do, um, I have seen some parents um, in some chats where they say, I'm not ready. Yeah. Actually, they're not ready to send them in mm. because of anxiety or worry about when all kids are in one. Because it's been mm. so many months without any cold flu yeah. any type of disease come home yeah. and now all of a sudden they're going to get exposed into that into the winter yeah. and then you hear speculation that there might be a second wave yeah. so there's all this about should we isn't it best just to keep them at home mm. and and it's very difficult this is a difficult one but if you've got no choice it's even worse that's and when you've thing. got choice yeah you can think okay what's best because yeah it's been so long off work as well mm. you've got to see the whole bigger scheme yeah. of financial and the parents should feel comfortable as well and I think I think for example making it compulsory for those parents especially the ones that have high anxiety and are really apprehensive about sending their child in it is scary for them yeah um, I mean Benji even myself thinking okay we're going to go to school and there's 430 kids that are going to be coming in straight away well that in itself is scary right. um, and I was talking to my mum this morning and I was because my mum works in a school and I was saying mum you know how are the parents going to drop the nanny off and how are they going to pick them up? You know, all of that, just, you know, you're thinking about it in itself is quite scary. And how are we going to tackle that? Yeah. But, I, you know, I do feel for those parents that are, you know, more anxious than normal as well. Um, and I don't feel that they should be penalised simply because they are worried about, you know, a second spike. And they're only looking after their children, you know, at the end of the day. They're not doing anything wrong um so i do feel for the parents that you know that they shouldn't be penalized for this um and it is a shame obviously that the government are putting this in force as well so let's just see what happens really i know we can't we have to just go with what the guidance is given unless you have unless you fight for it properly yeah like some i i, I reckon some parents will yeah um because that's just how they feel mm. and whereas p parents who have been sending their kids in back in when they could yeah. Um, for them, if you hear some of those children, like my, my niece has gone back and she loves it. She absolutely enjoyed going yeah. back into school and it was only five kids in the class. The distancing, you know, it was perfect, but, um, she absolutely enjoyed herself and, um, she's looking forward to going again. Yeah. So yeah, same with my niece. She went back, she's five and she loved it. 
mm. and just seeing her friends. But she was quite aware. So her mum had prepped her, my baby had prepped her, you know, make sure you keep your distance, yeah. keep washing your hands. Um, so she, you know, she had that, had that mind as well, but she enjoyed just going back to school. And I think that normality, we should say, you know, when they go mm. back in, she was feeling a bit more that, oh, I'm going back to school. It's a bit normal now. Um, so I think for some children, they're looking forward to, I know my children are, they are looking forward to going to school. Yeah. Um, but there is that side of me that is a bit, you know, anxious as well and a bit apprehensive thinking, okay, how is this going to pan out? Um, but I think we just have to wait and see what happens as well with the school. So this so. is, this is the bit where if you don't talk to your children, mm. then they won't have an understanding of what yeah. to expect. Whereas if you show your anxiousness mm. and anything negative towards the children, you yeah. they're going to pick up on that and they're going to feel the same yeah definitely. whereas if we just sit back and let things go the way they are but we, we guide them in a way that's a bit more positive yeah. and we see how things go at the time because it could change definitely yeah. so we that, just that, don't know yeah we just don't know at the moment we just don't know but as long as I, I feel as long as we're talking to them and say so my backup is in September if I feel I'm I have an option of not to send them and say the death rates went up a little bit and the spike came through, the yeah. second spike, I wouldn't send them then because I would yeah. see how I feel at that time and oh. my husband as well. And if he felt it's okay, then we would discuss it and yeah. you know decide on what's, what's best. But if they had to stay home for another three more months before like going back in January, I would definitely set up that virtual classes again, only because that was my sanity. Yeah. I, I found those to be so useful for me and not the, the stress load of not being able to teach yeah. um, that as well as doing everything else yeah. I would prepare myself in other ways yeah to, so you're kind of mentally prepared yourself as a parent what to expect next time if obviously this happens again yeah or, you know if it extends further and I think that's what I found for example if when I was phoning things up at home and children talking to them it was the parents found the teaching difficult and, and I do feel for them. And mm. even my own family, my babies and, you know, my sisters, they were like, you know, we're finding it hard to manage the teaching side of things as well as doing all the you know, housework as well as working as well from home. And I think that's where it was quite, uh, quite difficult, you know, challenging, I'd say, Benji, for the parents. It is <laughs> challenging, um, that's the word. <laughs> definitely challenging. And even people were like, but you're a teacher, it's easy. No, Benji, it's not easy for no. me. Uh, my own three kids of different ages that had different needs, you know, working at different levels. It was really difficult, Benji, you know, trying to no. manage that as well as doing everything else and working from home as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, it has been challenging. Um, but I, I do I, think... I find that when I was teaching maths and English or any subject, yeah. it would be, I don't know. And that didn't mean I don't know. It's I don't want to. Yeah. If you really listen to what they're saying, it's I don't yeah. want to do it this way. And they knew they could get away with it. So yeah. that's when, within those first few weeks, I realized I'm not stressing myself over this. This is not yeah. worth my time because I could be doing something else. Yeah. And rather than stressing about children and their education, mm. let's get someone in. So that's when I got someone in to do the Mandy English yeah. and it was a massive load off me. So I would yeah. do that again. So if you can prepare yourself, mm. if what, but if, if you need yeah. to, then that would be mentally better for you too. Definitely. Because even yeah. if you do keep them in for another three more months, it, it's fine. They're still young. Mm. They'll catch up. Well, it's only thing, a year in, hi yeah. in hindsight. It's only a year. Yeah. It's not gonna... And I, I said that to a a lot of parents who are very worried as well and they're like you know what should we do our children are falling behind you've got to remember everybody's in the same boat so all the yeah. children are at the same you know or we're all at the same situation not different from each other you know it's a like yeah like you said you know and they could catch up it's not going to be hard you know i'm sure schools are putting things in place um in our school we've got like a recovery curriculum that we're putting in place for children and we're also looking at their mental well-being as well so when children do come in we're not going to go straight into teaching we mm -hmm. want them to come in first and get used to the whole you know the new norm as it's going to be in schools as well and not put that pressure that they need to go straight to maths and english um so i do feel parents need to kind of think as well that you know we shouldn't worry too much about the education side of things yes it's important and you know get your child to read daily and do bits like that but um, not to worry too much about it. Yeah, I don't think the worrying gets you anywhere at all. Yeah. I think it's more chilling out, doing all yeah. other life skills, like I said before, like life skills, like mine are in the tent right now in the garden. Yeah. 
um and that they love doing that I know like you know when it's a hot day we wouldn't do it on a normal day when they went to school then but now we would and they enjoy this experience they can read in there they can watch something in there it's weekend what they like so it's they're enjoying it as well at home so if they had to be here for another three more months I'm I'm actually prepared yeah I'm mentally prepared because it would be me and my Mm mum and then we look after Nanny as well so there's lots to do but you kind of have to just get on with it, but reach yeah. out for help Definitely. if you need help. Yeah. And there's I think that's no the point in suffering thing. in yeah. silence. What, what, what are you going to gain? You're going to gain yeah. stress. You're going to gain anxiety. Yeah. Um, there is help out there. And there's so many organizations that Definitely. can help you. Yeah. And I think that's the key message that obviously we don't want any parent to feel they can't reach out to me. Um, So so please reach out even to us on Musket, even to Benji, if you need to chat to Benji and see colouring anybody just to talk to them, um, just to get some support that you need, even just a chat. You know, sometimes a person just needs a chat. Reach out to your friends, your social circle, um, even to the school. If you need support from the school, contact them. And yeah. I'm sure they'll be willing to help because we don't want parents to feel that they can't. Mm. Um, like I said, as well, we shouldn't shy away from that. If we need help, we should just say that we need the support. Yeah. But Benji, it's been brilliant having you on. Thank you so much. Yeah, Lovely having a chat you. with you. Um, and the messages were brilliant. You know, prepare your children. Just talk to your children. Uh, you know, mentally prepare them about what is going on, what might happen, um, what is to come as well. So just talk to your children daily. I think that's really important messages that you've given. So thank you so much, Benji, for coming on. It's been lovely yeah, speaking so to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Benji. Well, I agree with you. Bye, 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 B